The first three weeks of the eruption here in Hawaii, crazy things would happen in the middle of the night. A new fissure would open up and it would threaten a new neighborhood. Thousands of people were evacuated from their homes. I started the Hawaii Tracker Facebook group to help people understand what's going on and get their questions answered. Hey, how's it going? We're live. This is Fissure 20. We had hundreds of people all throughout the neighborhoods sending in videos and articles and images. We spend a lot of time making sure the accurate information gets out. This is live, it's still lava moving. They weren't just sharing a story, they were helping their neighbor. If a family member was being evacuated, my group would just jump in and help out. It was huge. They were watching out for each other. Hello everybody, thank you for coming. Thank you for the support from everybody. As we go through this, we're growing closer together as a community. When tragedies like this strike, you really realize how much you need each other. Hello everyone, I'm geologist Philip Ong. I am here with Dane supporting me in a chat. He's looks, looking frozen on the screen here, but uh, he's with us in the chat today. And we're bringing you guys a follow-up update tonight. Um, it's right between the middle of the night, Wednesday, June 7th, the beginning of this eruption, and Thursday, June 8th. We're doing this a little bit of a weird time just because this is when it fits into the schedule. We're doing a lot of work up in the park. So apologies if you can't catch us live today, uh, but we'll try to just uh, follow up on what's happening here on the volcano on Kilauea since the eruption began today. And we will plan to do, maybe on Friday afternoon or evening, um, a fuller update, right? So to, uh, tomorrow, well, Friday, we'll say, right? depending when you're watching this, right afternoon or evening um, to bring us back up to speed and, and maybe not go through this so quickly. So uh, that said, we we're looking at the live cam of Kilauea here. So let me put this up on the screen for you guys and get a live view through the USGS YouTube webcam here. And plenty of lava coming out, lots of lava in a crater floor. Uh, you're seeing a few spots here that don't have as much lava, but let's go through this uh, in a little bit more organized fashion. I just want to give you a little quick preview here of what's going on. Um, so let's give you guys uh, today's Hawaiian Volcano Summary. So Kilauea began erupting this morning at 4.44, uh, spreading lava across the entire inner crater floor, an area of about 384 acres, so quite a large area there. Um, 
The eruption began with fountains out of the middle of the crater floor, but has now included a, 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 has progressed to the southwest part of the crater rim, where there is actually off of the crater floor, not to the rim, but a little bit above the crater floor, a, a new vent that has appeared in the southwest wall. So, what I can show you guys here is the map put out by the US just today, showing this area in red where the lava is contained. So it's still within that innermost pit right in there. Right in there, yeah. And this larger area of down and drop block is this area right here. So it can still spill over into all this area before even coming out onto this next crater floor that's right over here. So this means that the lava is completely contained within the summit of Kilauea. There's no threat of it escaping outwards and getting near any people. Uh, no infrastructure is at risk here. And really the, uh, the biggest hazard is going to be the gas, which we'll get to here in just a second. So lava's filled that whole area down there. Um, if we look at the lake depth chart from the USGS, this is a laser that's pointing in at the lava surface in a particular location on that crater floor. And you can see that here it's been pretty, pretty flat down um, for most of this uh, last week here. But what you can see is that early this morning it jumped way up there. You can see this distance from 388.5 meters more or less to somewhere around 394.5 meters. So that would indicate something like six meters at the spot of this particular laser pointer. And you can see that since then it's come down a little bit actually. Right? So it seems like maybe some of the gas is escaping and it's settling a little bit or there are some other undulations or variations happening, not quite clear. In any case, what you can see here is evidence of lava filling the crater floor uh, a great extent. We can turn to the USGS updates. There was a daily update earlier today. And for brevity, I'll just highlight some of the, the measurements here. They do note that the largest lava fountain as of this morning when they were, were measuring it is consistently about 15 meters, 50 feet high. They do say that during the early phase of the eruption, fountain bursts reach at least approximately 60 meters, 200 feet high. 200 feet high, 60 meters. However, if we look at the at the opening sequence of the, of the eruption, it does appear that lava is hanging in the air and falling for quite a bit longer than it would take to fall that distance. So we may see this revised perhaps once there is a video analysis of that measurement there. Um, 370 acres or 150 hectares of the crater floor and about 10 meters or 33 feet depth of new lava has been added to the crater floor. This was the 9 a.m. update that followed the two early morning updates, changing the aviation code and the alert level. And then we had a follow-up status report this afternoon at 4 p.m. from the USGS, stating that hi fountain heights have decreased since eruption onset, and as of approximately 3 p.m., were approximately 4 to 9 meters, 13 to 30 feet high. So down a little bit. If you're uh, 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 randomly around the Kilauea Caldera Rim and looking in, those fountains are probably likely in a range of, of, of 15, 20 feet-ish, we'll say, with the bigger ones around 30 feet, perhaps. So once again, same statistics, 370 acres, 10 meters, 32 feet depth. They do note a ring of elevated 1 to 2 meter high, 3 to 6 feet high lava surrounds the perimeter of the crater floor, like a bathtub ring, encircling the continued lava flow activity across the crater floor. So that's the the important stuff there. There is another important thing here, which was actually they were able to put out a measurement this morning of the volcanic gas. Gas emissions in eruption area are elevated. It's a two emission rate of approximately 65,000 tons per day it was measured between approximately 8 and 9 a.m. this morning, June 7th, 2023. That's a huge amount, 65,000 tons. It helps that they were able to measure it very early on in a sequence, so they probably caught that, that initial burst of it. Uh, I think the measurement that we had from the last eruption in January might have come a little bit later in the day, and it came in at around 12 or 13,000 tons per day, which is still a huge amount. It's still not as much as we saw in 2018, where the values were upwards of 200,000 tons per day, but it's still quite a lot. It's expected to decrease pretty quickly, but from this high level, it's going to put out quite a lot of bad gas for island residents. So we finished off our summary here. This is the uh, VOG mapping project from University of Hawaii, and with that 65,000 tons per day input coming out of Kilauea the, and the current weather conditions, this is where the VOG is expected to impact people on the ground. This is just at moderate levels, so uh, it's a little bit more constricted or restrained here if it's uh, at the unhealthy or hazardous levels, but still quite a lot of VOG, especially around uh, Pahala, uh, Ocean View, Na'alehu, 
all of South Kona and actually all the way up into Kona proper, Kailua Kona proper itself there. So Vogue is the biggest impact of this eruption and obviously very great viewing. And that's our Hawaiian uh, volcano summary for this week. And we will get into the viewing areas here in our, our continuing update. Uh, but this, just to keep it going here, let me elaborate a little bit more on this VOG forecast. And let's just switch over to our hazard tagline here and get up the fuller VOG forecast, which is this. So what I've done here is, uh, let me put it back to the beginning. What I've done here is progress through from moderate to unhealthy to hazardous. You can see the progression. This is the moderate view here. So here comes the unhealthy, a, bit, a little bit less of an extent, but still pretty intense there. And at South Hawaii and the West Hawaii area, especially South Hawaii, we're looking right now at the SO2. That's the raw gas coming out of the volcano. So not so much the VOG, but the pure gas. Now we're looking at hazardous levels. So even a smaller area, but still present there. Now, the SO4, this is the VOG at hazardous levels, similar areas down here in South Hawaii, also Kona proper itself. And we're, now we're going to go back the other way. Unhealthy, you can see a little bit greater extent of the VOG, even pops into the saddle a bit there. But you see it's reaching all the way across Waikoloa towards Waimea there before it gets wrapped back offshore. If we look at just the moderate levels, right, this is certainly something you might be able to smell, even if it's not hazardous to you, then you're seeing that similar effect. I mean, much of this west part of Hawaii, and it looks like even in, in this earlier frame, might have been drifting over towards Honoka in the northeast as well. So a lot of areas of the island could get impact from this. We'll have to see uh, if the winds change at all overnight. Sometimes they're a little bit weaker in the night times and they can drift a little more. Um, but certainly this is the biggest impact is the, the gas here. Along those lines, we can look at Purple Air Citizen Science Monitoring Network. And we do have some measurements coming in from Navajo at high values of PM 2.5. This is more that VOG, the SO, SO4. And you can see Kona itself having some elevated values as well. So it's starting to see an impact. This will probably last a few days at least um, as it kind of ramps down. It, it drops exponentially. So it'll come down pretty fast. But it's even if it comes down in half, it's still going to be 30,000. That's still a huge amount. And in half again, it's still another huge amount. So it might go a little faster than that. Um, but expect it to last for a little while still. Within the National Park itself, if you're going up there for viewing, I'll just show you guys the charts here. Everything's been in the green today all day. Most of that VOG is blowing up and away and off to the southwest and not impacting the park so much. The one spot I see a little bit of elevated values is over on Mauna Loa Southwest Rift at Kahuku Crossments, SO2 there. So that's not even by the caldera of Kilauea anyways. Everything else is in the green, so looking pretty good in the park for viewing. Although, of course, with these high values, of gases emitted, if you have any kind of um, condition that makes you more sensitive to those gases, you certainly want to take precautions because uh, if the winds do change, you want to be caught and stranded. So certainly keep that in mind. Follow all park directions and guidance and um, enjoy your visit. So one last, oh yeah, so I showed you guys that. So um, what we'll do now is switch over to our visuals. And right? so our observations, our practice of Kilo, Kilauea here. And we'll start off with this. This is the, the capture from the live stream from this morning on a USGS camera. And it's been since released by, by USGS as a clip showing that initial onset at 4.43.49 seconds AM. I'm going to zoom it in there so you can get a full better view. Uh, there is that fountain shooting back up. You see a puff of gas coming up here in the top right. And the lava is clearly shooting in the air and coming and splashing down, and you can see it hitting the ground, right? So some of this stuff in a very high spot, 1,001, 1,002, 3, not very accurate, 1,004, 5, you're looking at 5, 6, 7 seconds maybe before that stuff falls to the ground. Some of this stuff is really quite up there. Um, so this is where I say that perhaps there'll be some um, revision once you see the video analysis of this from the USGS. It's also something that happens after the fact. It's not uh, done live at the time. So um, that might come out in the days ahead here. So here's our opening sequence. Maybe I better zoom it out a little bit. You can see that uh, perimeter of lava spreading across that crater floor, just basically sweeping over everything. You don't really see it, um, at least on this angle. 
doing anything different than making a giant pancake right there. We'll see from our art of views and other cameras that there is a little bit more um, definition to the, the nuance to the little details than that. But there is that opening sequence from the USGS. So pretty cool. I'll keep it moving here since there's a lot of imagery to show you guys. Uh, I've tried to curate it because I didn't want to show you all of it, but there's just so, still so much in the first day of any eruption. So this is a video taken by Matt Patrick in the USGS. They're doing a flyover this morning. Um, low to the ground. Oh, God. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, there is the helicopter flying low to the ground right above this downdrop block area. It's giving an idea of what it might look like from the ground earlier this morning. So you see those, those two bigger fountains there and lots of other smaller stuff in the surroundings. I'm, I won't play that again to spare anyone's ears, but let me advance here, cut off that sound just in case. And this is a video taken from the West Rim by US geoscientists. So this is early on. As you can still see it's like pre-dawn. It's the, the light's still a little bit dark, but there is source coming up here, flowing both directions. There's a source coming up over here. There's all this whole line going this way. This is a central island right here. And there's like stuff coming up on its west side, on its east side. Well, let's rewind that. Come back here. Yep, so a central island right there. West side, east side. This is the uh, old east vent way in the background over there. But on the north side as well is all this extra fountaining that we haven't seen fountaining from this area before. And even if I were to zoom in real close, there's a spot right here in the middle of the island, perhaps, that might actually be erupting as well. So it looks like that crack seemed to have gone across into the island. It's definitely splashing all over that island. And we'll see how long that island survives if this lava flow keeps burying it further and further. We'll have to wait and see what actually happens there. But it's, it's, it's buried quite a bit already. And it looks like it might be going further if all those fountains are all around the edge of it. So that's the next video. Let's turn to our cameras now. So that view that we just saw taken uh, visually, here is the time-lapse animation from the F1 camera. And so there's that, that source that early on was flowing in both directions, was right here in the middle. It's going that way and this way. And one thing you can notice is that the lava comes and floods this whole area, but now towards the end of this video, we start to see this, this uh, darker purple color, which is the not quite as hot liquid lava area it seems to be growing in area, right? So not quite clear if the ground is getting pushed up and it's just kind of floating back up because this does appear to be that area that's a remnant of that original West Vent. We've been calling it West Vent 1.0 for a while. And let's see how it kind of almost seems to kind of sag down at the beginning when eruption begins, but it's hard to tell if that's the ground actually dropping or the lava actually rising or some combination of both. In any case, it does seem to reverse that trend here at the end of the video, right? So that's one explanation is the ground can be pushed up. Or another explanation might be that the actual amount of lava coming out has gone down slightly, which we would expect because it does drop off every hour from the beginning of the eruption, it seems like. Um, so it could be coming out a little bit less and starting to um, recede down and not fill its full, full depth anymore. So it, it might have reached the peak and now it's circulating everything and it's going to lift up the whole thing more steadily uh, as long as it can. So that's the F1 camera. Let's move on to the uh, KW camera. So the wider view here. So that F1 camera is zoomed in more so to somewhere in there. So you're not getting all these different edges of the crater. But this is great because you can see a lot of detail here, including the new newest vent here on that southwest rim, which is over here on this side. So let me zoom in and show you guys some of this stuff a little bit closer up. And here we can see our west vent complex in the foreground sticking above right there, right? That's likely that place where the, the, the flow is coming and splitting out and across. Here is a central island. It's not always easy to tell because the views are slightly different. Uh, over here. And the fountains, there they are around that central island as it begin. There, 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 and there. All around. I'll pan over to the right a bit. So there's a whole group of fountains over here in the southern part of the, of the crater. Uh, we see bubbling. We mentioned it over here already. But there's bubbling all the way over here as well. You see some coming up along the crater wall on the southeast side. More or less in there. What else can we see over here in this area? Another spot here towards the east. The opening phase, you do see the lava come and sweep across. Like that. So when it loops back around, there's another fountain coming up over here on the left. 
So lots of small areas of, of fountaining. And um, from this time lapse, which is going most of the day today, you can see that some of these areas are actually stationary. Sometimes you do see other little, little bubbling parts of the lava lake that move drifting with the lake, showing that it are not actually rooted down in the ground beneath the crater. But all of these so far seem to be stationary, right? They all seem to be persistently in the same place across at least 12 hours for today. So that's interesting to note as well. Um, obviously, we can't see what's underneath that crust and we can't know for sure, but just a note there, that's interesting. So all that said, the most interesting thing to me is this vent over here on the southwest side of the crater. So there it is. You can see it's got a, a pretty steep drop and then it sweeps over into the rest of the lake. This angle is such that, that you actually can see the steepness of it a little bit better. There might be a little bit of distortion here. There's, when you're on the ground, it looks like it's a little bit more of a ramp. And it seems to be building that ramp as more lava is coming out of the ground there. So let me back it up here. And just so I can show you guys a timestamp, and you probably can't see it as well over there, right? But here we are in the evening. Um, and when it's going to loop back around to the beginning, when this eruption begins, it does not come out of this crack to start. It comes out from the other places around the crater floor. And uh, let's see, so here we are at the beginning. Let me pause it. So 7.3805. Zoom in over there. There's not even any gas. 7.3805. Let me see how fast I can start and stop that. 7.4805. Now there's a little bit of gas right there. It's a little puff of gas right there coming up. So that's about it. So uh, 7.38 is, uh, if we were 48, Call it 44 to make it easy, right? So three hours after the beginning of the eruption, we're seeing this this occur. Can go a little more. That's 818. You see a little bit more puffing coming up there. And now I actually see red right there. Like the lava is actually starting to leak out from that spot. Possibly a little earlier than this. Um, what does that say? Uh, 858. And so within four hours, there lava is coming out of this new area. And what's so fascinating to me is that it's actually high up on the crater wall. This is how we saw, saw the, the 2020 eruption begin. And what happened then was the lava filled the whole crater, which was a lot skinnier down at the bottom, and got to the height of this vent. Not this vent, the vent that was producing at the time. It was a north vent originally. And actually drowned that vent and caused that vent to shut off entirely. And there was another vent at the time in 2020 that was on the western wall a little higher up, and that one took on all the effusion. All the lava started coming out of there instead of the other spot because the other one was drowned and buried under. And eventually we saw that, that uh, eruption end as lava reached the western vent as well. And that's the western vent 1.0 that, that I refer to. That's Remnants are back in here somewhere um, underneath all, all this lava. And there, there's still some chunks of stuff that are a little bit less dense in there that causes it to kind of buoy and float up, up and down. So interestingly, if this thing is high enough up the wall, then maybe it can't be drowned because you have all this space in the down drop block in this direction over there, kind of this area all over here, this back bay, to put lava in that's at a, at a, at a deeper point than this. This thing's going to be hard to bury. And I'd be I'll be curious to note whether there's any change in the pattern of, of, of effusion. Right now, most of the lava seems to be coming out from the central underneath the, the crater crust over here. And I wonder, might we see some change of it switching to this other one over here at some point in time? Might be too early to say that, and this thing might shut off, who knows? But what we do know is that this is a new crack coming up on a crater wall that wasn't there before, because you can see lava coming out of it. And that's the only crack that's new that we can see. There are likely other cracks underneath all this uh, crusted crater and all the, the lava underneath there as well. But then it's hard to tell if that's the same crack that erupted last year and the year before and the year before that, or if it's a new crack. So we just can't say anything about that, really. Um, but the one on the side here, clearly a new crack. And that would lead me to, to believe that the new cracks are also underneath that crusted crater floor, even though there's no evidence visible from right here that you can, that you can say that really conclusively. So yeah, maybe one more time, let me zoom in on this area back over here so you can get a better view of that, that southwest vent there. Made a, made a little channel for itself. Here it pops up and there it is, trickling down, makes its flow. 
it's harder to tell since it happens in the daytime, right? You actually see lava pouring out down here pretty quick, even if you, before you can see it up on this on this side over here. They're pretty cool. That's the west new the new southwest vent. All right, keep it moving here since it's late. This is the VI, uh, uh, the V1 camera. So this camera was moved several times during the day to point at different parts of the crater floor. So we'll break this down better on Friday. But there is a wider view. We actually pan over. Let me see if I can get this to stop at the right spot. This is unlikely, but. Somewhere, yeah, there's, there's a close-up of one of those fountains in the middle of the crater floor. Another one. The other way. I'm going to pull it play again see if I can catch it, maybe. Just in there. It's there. So that's a view where they zoomed into that that southwest vent a little closer, right? So you can see a little bit, a little bit more. And maybe you can zoom in more. Looks like there's actually a, a hookah, a little hole. A lot of us coming up here dribbling down this direction. Also dribbling down this direction and another couple of fountaining spots right here. And earlier this evening, we actually could see this thing bursting lava into the air, like shooting it up. It's like the fountains seem to be growing in this area. So as we said, we'll have to wait and see. Okay. Um, Maybe play the rest of this so you guys can see a little bit more flashy. Like I said, I'll break it down later, but there is that ending view where the live cam is pointing right now. Maybe we started off the, the update for you guys. And moving on, let's look at the S1 camera from the south. And there it is, a uh, different view, pretty cool. There's our central island right there in the middle. Um, you see the fountains begin right around it on all the sides. I can zoom it in more, perhaps. And you can see that that the area seems to die down quite a bit by the end there. So there you see this fountain starts off strong, kind of dwindles down on the on eastern part of the, of the island there. The ones on the west also seem to dwindle down. There's ones in the northwest persistent a little bit more still up there. Right? You also can tell how the lava is, I mean, the island is only part above lava early on, and it's just this. And here at the end of the sequence, you can see there's a lot more area that's not... Uh, got flowing lava over it anymore, where the lava has either stopped flowing, um, hardened, or that ground has risen out of, the, out of the flow. So that's the fascinating aspect there. Look how many more fountains there are over here to the side. There is that cluster we saw in the southwest, and then here that whole West Bend complex with that earlier view we saw in the foreground of the lava flow coming out and all through back in here as well. So the last thing we can see pretty well from here is this eastern spot when it first opens up and what happens after that. Let me see, maybe that's too far. And so there is that fountain in the east. You see it kind of floods across. And this is, we had all this, this remains of the eastern basin um, yesterday that now all that's buried under lava. You won't see any of that structure down here anymore. So that's the S1. Let me move on to the B1 camera. B1 is on the east looking to the west. The eruption actually um, starting by the island way over here, and that closer vent to the east is the one you see in the foreground right over here. So the lava is coming all the way up underneath this cliff. This is this cliff is not that tall anymore. There's likely some intense heat blowing over here and some gases across this camera as well. So we'll see how long this camera actually lasts down there, um, if it's moved, repositioned, or anything like that, right? Um, but that's the B1 camera. Uh, we had, there's an image of the B1 camera coming up in a bit here too. The last one I'll show you guys, this is from a national park and from a kind of volcano house area there, looking from, from the east back to the west. So this is a view you can kind of see, a lot of that further caldera floor over here. So since we're interested in this aspect, let me zoom it into there. And this is more or less what the view from volcano houses look like today. All right. that's all the time lapses compiled for you guys today. And uh, let me sh just share with you guys, there is a whole new photo video, video chronology put out by the USGS today with all different photos on here. I'm not going to show every single one because there's too many and uh, it would take us way too long, um, as well as some videos here as well. Those are some of the ones I've showed you guys already. Uh, we'll catch up on those on Friday. 
but they're there if you'd like to take a peek sooner. So for what I've picked out to sh share it with you guys from that set and a couple other pictures as well is this kind of similar to that first one we saw and it's just this really f amazing um, lighting here and thought it really captures all this pretty well and you can really see if we can try to count this fountains maybe and there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve that I can see that are not it's not the kind of gas that uh, convinced of, right? So there's quite a bit of spots on there. Really, really cool. Looking at from the aerial view from the helicopter, similar kind of thing. You can see how they're all over the, the Caldera floor there. It looks like in, in the daytime you only see these red spots there and there, but really all the silver stuff is that excuse me, that same red lava. We see the little little glowing red cracks through the crust there. That gives you that hint that that's the case. And that's the, the whole area that glows red at night tonight is that whole crater floor there. So there is another view of that southwest vent from a different angle. You can see that trickle a little bit more like a ramp here coming across this talus boulder field and then hitting a flat and making a, a river of lava that flows down to the lake. This area up here is actually part of that, that western downdrop block. Uh, that seems to be not entirely, but um, at least partially covered further uh, during this burst that happened today. The one cool thing is that the geologists were able to land down on a down drop block on the opposite side, the eastern one, and collect samples. So here is an image of the samples they've collected today. The fresh lava, what it actually looks like. And this, they were able to actually land in a safe, solid spot, not an actual crust of that's floating over liquid lava. So they actually landed somewhere safe that's got plants growing in it and all that. Walked up to the edge and the crater is so so full to the edge there and we're able to collect these pieces of sample these samples of lava range in size from several inches um and we analyze later for the chemistry of the lava right that's really what it's all about is getting the chemistry of that first burst of lava coming out so um there are some other images from this set so um while they're on the ground, they're going and actually checking on a camera. Here's a B1 camera right here, pointing at the lava lake, which is right behind it from this point of view. That's at a person's height looking at, looking across there, right? So this is why why you can imagine it checking on it already and seeing what's going on there. Looking across the crater floor at that ground level down drop block at the fountains. There it is. There's a fountain bursting in the air. You see it's um, sizable here. And in the foreground, you can see there's actually some, some plant growing here in the foreground, right? So this is how you can tell this is actually the older, colder ground, a lot colder before this morning, um, but enough that you actually could grow some of this, this stuff on here. So this is that example of 49 meters, 13 to 30 feet high uh, fountains right there. All right, so on the crater floor, there's a USGS scientist walking out towards the edge. Um, he's on this solid ground. Right? There is some of that plant life growing right there. But this black stuff here right next to it, that appears to all be the fresh lava right there. So that's that contact line right there between this old down drop block. And this might be the actual edge of the, the cliff, the crater right there. And if so, the lava is up exactly to that height. And in, in some of these spots, like right there, it seems to have actually flowed onto the down drop block a tiny, tiny bit. Right there, there's another little lobe right there that seems to have come onto the down drop block. So not a lot, maybe right there. It's hard to tell exactly what was underneath there, but there are some spots that it does appear to have overflowed already onto this down drop block. And to me, uh, uh, remembering Kilauea's crater floor from its changes over the year, this feature here in the background, this is 1982 Fisher that was up at that upper level of the main floor of Calopele Caldera and dropped down those 400 feet in 2018 on a down drop block. So really interesting to see that at eye level again, because um, you used to be able to hike through there. There's actually an old hiking trail. The Halamat Matwa Trail is still preserved on this down drop block. And it's kind of winds on the backside, back, backside and goes right along this, this, this uh, spatter rampart from this for sure from 82. So really interesting area there. And yeah, um, 
this is where they could walk up to and collect a sample really, really easily without having to venture anywhere dangerous, right? Um, if I zoom in a little bit more, you can see they got this thermal jacket on, a face mask. Um, see quite a lot of heat there, right? Not quite clear what, whether this is a helicopter in the background or what exactly, but um, it could just be some white, white back there as well, or maybe a station or something like that. So awesome. Um, here is a close-up of one of those lobes coming onto that old, old lava floor from the previous caldera lava flows. So there it is. Um, they say that it drapes over lava from the late 19th to early 20th century on the Halimau Mau crater floor. By the time each geologists arrived, this lava at the perimeter of, of Halimau Mau was solid, but still warm to the touch, having erupted earlier that day. We'll take an afternoon, this afternoon um, of Wednesday afternoon on the 7th. So I, I was able to go uh, to Uikahuna today, and this is a view I took, a picture I took from that overlook of that area. So this is that front cliff right here. It kind of goes across. So it's actually hiding some stuff behind a view back here. You can't quite see that full northern edge of the lava lake. But what we can see here, it does appear that you can see the ground is all cracked in this area. Crack, 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 crack right there in different color. And this might appear to be potentially that splash zone where the lava is actually splashed out of the crater. So that bath that they're describing, the high point of lava, includes this, but it probably comes all the way down to this. This looks like the bottom of the bathtub ring over here-ish. And so that whole area is that is kind of the surge zone, and we'll be curious to see what happens next down here in a down drop lock. So a few more images. Here's a series, a different kind of series. We'll start off with one image from the USGS themselves, showing the scientists silhouetted in a pre-dawn glow here. Nice glowing clouds. The sky is orange again. Um, so that's that's pretty amazing to see. Again, um, up here in, in the volcano area. But what I thought I'd do now is switch over to some of the photographs taken by Andrew Hara. And he's got a whole bunch of them, and I'm only going to show you four here today and catch up on the rest on Friday. But this, I thought, went, went well with the USGS photograph. So here he is. He flew with Paradise Helicopters this morning. Paradise and Andrew Hara here. And we're able to photograph the USGS scientists here at the end of the crater rim drive. Setting up their gear. You can see several scientists here. That looks like Frank Truesdell right in there without the helmet on and wearing a yellow jacket. Um, and some of the collapse cracks from 2018 that actually from this point on, through the rest of that road into the crater right there. This is as close as it can get. Pretty good view off of the off of the cliff there. Um, but we had to obviously walk in across all this stuff to be able to get, get to that spot. And we'll see more of that here in a minute. So next different angle. There they are at the edge of that, edge of that road. Zoom it in once again. Less people now. But here behind them, there's a the rubble, and all this black stuff above that, that's all the new lava. It's just a hint that it's all new lava from the little glowing spot right in there. And with this texture, actually, actually just a little bit more hints of red from other spots through here. It's really a fresh lava texture. This is actually the lava lake surface right there uh, in a daytime. So another really amazing image here by Andrew. Another one in this series here. Here is a scientists. And this not exactly the silhouette, but look at that, you guys. It's really incredible. What a what a photograph. One last one. The panned out view. So down in here, there's the end of that road where they are. There is that piece of road that's in that block that dropped into the crater. It looks like it's it's the same level here, but it's actually further in from this perspective. You're kind of looking right down right at it. So they somewhat line up there. And so here is that road they had to come in on. Another series of cracks back here. And back in there is where you see all the vehicles parked, ready to bail if needed. Right? In case, for example, what we see right over here there is that southwest corner vent right there. 
right? And that's the lava flow little channel going off that way. And imagine if this crack were to, were to keep going underneath here somewhere and pop out. This was early enough in the day that maybe weren't quite sure that things weren't going to change, and so they wanted to park the vehicles on the other side of where it might actually erupt if something were to happen, so they could have a chance to walk around and get out. So some things maybe don't think about as a as an observer here, but um, what do you what the USGS uh, has shared a little bit of how they operate here, and for reference, Uwekahuna, the old Jagger Museum, is all the way up here. So this is where the road is closed the public and they can able to, able to come down and around this way off the screen and loop back like that. So that'll con conclude maybe just one last look at, at the current point in time here, uh, middle of the night, current view of the webcams. So there is a KW, the F1, the V1, S1, and the B1, all looking pretty similar action everywhere. Okay, so let's look here at our viewing. Let me switch the tag one more time. This is a map of the National Park showing their viewing areas. The entrance station being right here. Visitor center right here. So there are all, all kinds of different places you can see this from. Um, I was all the way up to Uwekahuna today. From up here I could see it. I could not see it from back over here. But you can see it all the way around. The different degrees, right? You can't see everything from any one area. so. You can't see so well that southwest vent from over here, which you can see the eastern floor of the crater pretty well. As you walk over this way, uh, you can see from uh, Steaming Bluff the edge of the lava lake down on this corner over here, but you cannot see it, most of the surface itself. Come all the way around the Volcano House, you actually can see that back southwest vent, and you can see some of the lava lake here in the foreground. But you can't see the, that eastern edge that you can see from Uikahuna right there. And you're looking across a larger distance, therefore, if there's any um, gases or weather or anything like that, then that would interfere with that line of sight as well. And for, uh, continuing further on, uh, Waldron's Ledge over here. Um, I, we have not, I have not had uh, images from here, but I expect it's also quite good since that was better than Volcano House um, for the last year or so. And Back over here, I'm not quite sure. You know, I'm pretty good views from everywhere since it's so close to the the, the edge, the, the top edge of that crater. So there's a lot of good angles to look in. And Kanekakoi over here in the south is the one that's the closest in um, view. But you may not may, may not be able to see that tucked southwest vent from there, perhaps. And you can't see some of this inner stuff over here behind this ledge here as well. So if you really want to see it all, you got to walk all the way around. Um, Pretty busy today, couldn't go all the way around, but was able to walk a little bit of the way around to share with you guys. So this is the view from Uwekahuna area uh, by the old old um, observation post there. Um, a pile of rocks that's that's uh, just to the east of the old Jagger Museum. And there is a view, and as I pointed out before, that lava lake surface there. And this is a spot where you could see that maybe overflow zone was right in there. And so the kind of pan view is zoomed in further. One more time there. And there it is, yeah. The 84 that 82 fissure is right there. Right there. Okay, um going around, this is a little later at night now. So this is between the KMC and the the, the steaming bluff. So we do see the southwest vent. There, um, you see some of the lava lake here, but obviously the stuff that's underneath that ledge you can't see it as well, but just to get some idea of what it might look like here in the dark. Um, continuing around, this is a view from the steam bluffs themselves. So, so this was, of all the areas, maybe the least impressive, but you can still see lava from there as well. There it is bubbling up. You see like a little sliver of lava lake from there, but it is visible. If that happens to be the only spot you're able to park. Um, it's certainly been busy with traffic up here tonight. Not as much now, but at sunset especially. So zooming into that area, there is what it might look like. You certainly can see lava fountaining and bubbling up there. But just in comparison to the other views we just showed you guys, 
uh, not as impressive. Volcano House. Here is a volcano house on that grassy hill, which is uh, over the Whitney Vault. That was the original USGS HVO site. So there's still um, the room is still down there. It's like a bunker, and there, the National Park still does tours down there uh, with Dick Hirschberger reenacting uh, Thomas Jagger. So you can check out the park for those programs. So check that out if you have a chance to see, catch one of that, as well as Interruption. That'd be awesome to check out. But here from Volcano House, people are sitting on a grassy hill, looking across, and pretty good view of an eruption. There is that southwest vent. You can see a little bit more of that ramp profile here. And bigger fountains right in the middle, and smaller fountains visible around the perimeters around there. So panned out, zoomed in. And one last one we'll pull from Hawaii Tracker on Facebook. And this is by Linda Nichols. Mahalo, Linda. And this is just showing uh, oh, yeah, the glow in the sky and the view from the south from Kanakakoi, what it actually looks like. It's hard to tell exactly. That southwest vent is somewhere over here. I can't exactly see necessarily, right? But this might have been early enough in the morning that that vent might have not popped open yet since the, the light seems a little bit dark and we see lava all the way still actually to this eastern edge still everything red there's not really any gaps that you see major in here apart from this stuff here in the foreground so really uh interesting great views from all around the crater great this is like the epic time for viewing go and check it out if you can that's the bottom line there okay so spend a lot of time on that and i'm going to wrap it up here but we do need to go a little bit over the monitoring signals so let me just show you guys once one more time. Here's the lava depth jumping up and then coming down a little bit since then. The two-day tilt is interesting. We actually had a couple of earthquakes. There is one that seemed to have really upset the balance here. And the second one right in there, these vertical spikes in the middle there. And you can see in between it did this funny uh, deflationary wiggle before it came back up. Almost like the ground was going an up and down wiggle a little bit like that. So it kind of wiggling, wiggling, and then pop something maybe um with two earthquakes and some really strange uh, fluctuations are in the middle and that's where you can see the, see the most of the detail in the, today one month not as much one month so2 we haven't had a new value we can see our values in the last month here have always been in, in 100 to 400 tons per day range i've been talking for a while now about this one one year plot showing the most recent option at 14,000 tons per day. The new one's going to be 65,000 tons per day. So when this actually gets updated, this plot's going to end up rescaled way down here, and we'll have a new plot point way up here. And all this other stuff will get smushed down as well. So really, this is a, a very high gas measurement. This suggests there being quite a lot of lava coming out. A high gas measurement often indicates a high effusion rate. The only question really is a timing of what point at what hour after the eruption begins are we comparing one to the other, right? The 13 to the 65, but um, both high values there. The final thing to mention is that not only is the lava all contained within the caldera, there is no sign geophysically of any movement underground anywhere else. So here is the East Rift Zone at Puo'o, line getting closer together, contracting still, and the tilt over at Puo'o as well, showing deflation. So really nothing to worry about elsewhere apart from the summit. Earthquakes low down before this last couple of days of them um, um, building towards an eruption. Here is a last year pattern. We're looking at earthquakes per week. That whole build up sequence there. So most likely our new value coming in here is going to be end up somewhere close to where it is now because usually what happens is once once the lava is out of the ground and stably coming out and doesn't look like it's actually going to change that much then your earthquakes actually usually stop happening um, because the pressure is being relieved. As a caveat, it all depends on how much magma is coming from below. You could have an extra pulse coming up. It could create more earthquakes, more breakage. It could not be able to get out of that eruption vent that, that exists now fast enough to cause other... So that's, that's what you'd look for. But not, none of that seems to be occurring. It seems to be getting out of there just fine and no extra drama going on. Um, with earthquakes underground. So here's the last week of pattern that built up to the eruption, what it actually looks like. Always interesting to compare. We will always look at these week to week and wonder what does that mean? So here is one that actually led to an eruption. When it's looked this, looked this way, 
for a while now, actually. And maybe slightly bigger earthquakes coming up here at the end. Um, but really, it seems like the last few weeks there were more earthquakes filling in this area back over here, right? So it actually seemed to have slowed down a little bit before it popped. Um, but that's the pattern there. If I turn to the actual USGS earthquake page, uh, here it is. This is colored by time. So orange is today, red is in the last hour. There is nothing in the last hour except down here, not near the summit, not to deal with Kilauea. If I zoom in all the way into this, to just this area, it looks like the most recent earthquake here was at 7.30 this morning. Uh, the morning of the eruption, yeah? Um, the 7th. And that was this one right there. So really no, no earthquakes to speak of in the area since eruption, eruption shifted or, you know, opened that southwest vent right in there, right? So... That, as we said, was somewhere around 740-ish, right? So that 730 was the last earthquake before that opened up, and that was the end of the earthquakes as they're registering on this, on this map here. Okay, so that did our monitoring. That covered our recent earthquakes as well. Um, what do I have left for you guys? Just to say thank you to the county of Hawaii here. Let's give a big mahalo for them supporting our broadcasts uh, for the funding they provide us through the Viavai Vai Grant Program, also Hawaii Community Foundation through the Puna Strong Program. Um, that's where we're getting uh, our funding for, for this as well. All right, so um, we had hoped to right here transition you guys to two pineapples who are setting up up there at the crater right now um to live stream but it seems like there are some technical issues and i'm not sure that we'll be able to bring him on live but i will advise you to keep your notifications on in case two pineapples does come back on here to live stream from the critter tonight when the views are the best and the crowds are the least as well so that was uh our close to a full catch-up follow-up update here today and as i said i've left out a lot of stuff because usually the first eruption there's so much activity and so much imagery and um, we'll leave you to rely on that for the next day or so till we can come back on on friday to catch back up with what's happened since there's no real threat to people apart from the gases watch out for the gases but no lava threat to people um, we're past that early phase one thing to mention with these earthquakes here, right? There's not only are there no earthquakes elsewhere on the summit, there's no earthquakes anywhere else on the East Rift anywhere else. That's further confirmation. There's no magma movement outside. And that's really the lesson. And why I really wanted to come on tonight to share with you guys that there is still no hazard. Nothing has changed. It seems to be stabilized in the summit. And that's all steady and good. So I don't know um, if I can pull up any questions here. Uh, perhaps Dane has addressed them all in a chat thus far. Um, but maybe I'll give it a second just in case he's got something to drop here and try to open some of that here, but a little scared it would slow down the stream, so I have not kept them open as I have been sharing with you guys here. So give me a second to maybe find some comments. Let's see um, if there are any questions to answer. I know this is a weird time for me to be doing this update, so maybe not so many. But I'll just take a quick peek here. And I see some mahalos, no questions on Facebook. And let me switch over to the YouTube channel and look on there. Let me switch over to the echo and let's see here. Um, yeah, plenty of actions. Oh, well, hello, you guys. Thanks for tuning in. Hello, Dane, for all that. Mahalo to Josh, Josh WA for the super chat here, $49.99. Thanks for all the great info and views. Mahalo, Josh, appreciate that. Um, so yeah, um, looking for questions, a lot of good discussion and comment in there. And don't really see enough questions that I'm going to 
keep myself from going further. So mahalo you guys. Uh, uh, Dane is in the chat there. We've both had a long day. So uh, we'll sign off here. Thanks for joining. Until Friday afternoon. Um, hopefully we'll be able, to, be able to confirm that and won't be too burned out by that point in time. Um, but that's the goal is to bring you guys another, another update, perhaps before the weekend, if possible here. So stay tuned. Tune into Hawaii Tracker channel. Uh, you can see all the community posts of everyone else's videos and photographs. Post your own videos and photographs there. Share with everybody. Um, well, I see a question come in. Is Kona okay? Kona is totally fine. Kona, I mean, there's no lava anywhere outside the National Park. Lava is not a threat to anybody. The gas might get bad in Kona for, for a few days there. That's basically it. So, um, summary time. And I will say aloha and mahalo. From Hawaii Tracker, I'm Philip Ong. Dane Dupont's in the chat.